How's it going there, super friends? Welcome back to the channel, and today we're looking at two of my favorites from the Kenner Dark Knight collection, the Joker Cycle and Sky Escape Joker. Now, at the time that the Kenner Dark Knight collection came out, there wasn't a Joker figure that actually looked anything like Jack Nicholson. And so, when I saw the commercial for this figure, I thought, wow, the colors are all wrong, but darn it, that's a cool looking figure, and it actually looks like Jack Nicholson. The card art actually showcases what looks like an airbrushed portrait of Jack Nicholson. The Kenner Dark Knight Collection logo. Sky Escape Joker uses whirling copter pack to escape from trouble. The bubble looks very, very nice. And also there was a second feature. You could dip in ice water and face changes color. The back of the card art showcases not only how to put together the copter and also snap it to Joker's back as well as how to make his face change color, but also other figures and accessories that were part of the Batman Dark Knight collection. Crime Attack Batman, as you can see, I have. Although Tech Shield and Wall Scaler I don't own anymore. I did as a kid, but eh, you know what happens. Toys go missing. And then, of course, we see some vehicles. We have the Bat Cycle, which is on the way in the mail. The review is coming. The Bat Copter, the Bat Jet, and of course, the Joker Cycle, which we'll be reviewing in this video. And now, having removed him from his bubble very carefully so as to preserve it, we can put together his little backpack helicopter. Just like that. Pretty simple. Jeez, simple enough for a kid to put together. You'd think this was a child's toy and not just made for collectors. And also, here's his little long gun. Clearly, this was also made to emanate what he used in the movie. It fits right in Joker's hand, just like that. Just in time for shooting down the Batwing. <laughs> and of course, we have the basic figure. And I gotta tell you, even as a kid, I remember thinking, why are his pants pink? And his, why is his vest blue? That why did they change his colors so much? And I suppose that's one of the things that makes him unique for what it is. It's also apparent that Kenner used the exact same mold from the Superpowers Collection Joker, only without the knee articulation. No, seriously, here they are side by side, and you can tell it's the exact same mold. I mean, Kenner did own the mold, so why not use it again? Right down to the tails, there's literally no difference. It's exactly the same in every single detail. Until, of course, you get to the face, which in my opinion, for the year this figure was made, is actually a pretty darn good rendition of Jack Nicholson. And now to show you how that whole face in the water color changing thing works. Uh, does this mean you're going to drown me? In you go. You're blah, 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 blah. It should start to change color any time now. Any time now. Any... What's going on here? I mean... It saith here, dip in ice water and face changes color. What's going on? All right, this water is definitely ice cold. There's ice cubes floating in it, but as you can see, there ain't no color change happening. Maybe just a little weensy teensy bit, but there's not much going on here. A truly negligible amount of color change, indeed. I guess that's what happens when the toy is like 30 years old. <laughs> Anywho, at least we know that his helicopter backpack still works. <laughs> You'll never catch me, Batman. And yeah, that is Sky Escape Joker. A figure that I had as a kid, certainly stoked that I got it again. Now let's have a little peek -a at the Joker Cycle. Here's the front of the box, it's got some cool artwork with the Joker Cycle and the shooty Joker mask that comes off of the front. Here's the top, followed by the left hand side, the right hand side, the bottom with the proof of purchase, and the back with the actual toy that you get inside the package, plus a little image with the other three vehicles you could get at the time from the Kenner Dark Knight collection. As you can see, this box is completely unopened, and the tape seals have never been broken. Until today, that is. When we pull open the flap for the first time ever, and pull it out. Ooh, everything's all crispy and nice. I wish I had to pull it out that way. That would have looked a lot better. And here's everything that came inside of the package. We can see other toys that were contemporary at the time. Real Ghostbusters, Beetlejuice, Shadow Strikers, Robocop, and the Ultra Police, Rat Fink, and the Rad Rods. 
So here we see the figures from the first lineup. I actually had every single one of these. The vehicles, which no doubt I will eventually review all of on this channel. Some Batman roleplay gear here. I seriously wanted this as a kid, like really bad. Oh, this is what the rat think rad rods were. I remember them now. I never owned any of these, nor did I actually know any kids that had any of them. Here's the Robocop toys. I only ever had Robocop. He's on this page, just the basic Robocop figure. And here's some of the vehicles that came in the line. They boasted a really cool selection of vehicles. I did have Robo One, that was their cop car. And I also had the cycle on the left. Oh, look at that. It turns out the chassis for both of these were reused in the Dark Knight collection. And some live action role play stuff. Here we have some baseball figures, which I never cared about. More baseball. More baseball, Beetlejuice, of which I actually did have some of these. I had Showtime Beetlejuice, Spinhead Beetlejuice, and actually, I took the head from Spinhead and put it on the classic suit to make a basic Beetlejuice figure. I also had Otho the Obnoxious, but I didn't have any from this page. But my oh my, what a cool figure line this was. Imagine cuddling up next to that at night before you went to bed. More Beetlejuice stuff, Shadow Strikers, I don't even recall these. I, I actually cannot remember Shadow Strikers. Not even a little bit. I don't recall these guys at all. And then we have the real Ghostbusters, which if I'm being honest, by the time this all came out, I was more than a little bit uninterested in this stuff. Like I liked the classic stuff, but I didn't like the bright neon stuff. Some vehicles, Ecto-1, Ecto-500, Ecto-3, and Ghost Sweeper vehicle. And of course, like the rest, no toy line would be complete without any live action child role play stuff. And then here's more Ghostbusters stuff on the back. The Proton Pack was really the only thing I ever wanted as a kid. Shame, never got it. Anyhow, we got Joker's face. Let's pull that out of the baggie for the first time. We've got the wheels. Let's pull them out too. We've got the stickers for placing on the bike's fuel tank. And then of course we have the bulk of the bike and we have the handlebars and headlights. Obviously you don't have to be a genius to put this together. Just stick the handlebars right there and they clip into place. The rear wheel goes right into these here slots snaps into place. We're going to do the same thing with the front wheel. Pop it into place like that. We're going to put the sticker decals on just like that. And lastly, we're going to stick the face into the place where it snaps into position in the front of the bike. And voila! All complete. You know, let's put this against a different background so the bike will stand out more. There, how's that? Now we can actually see the purple of the bike show up better. As a 10 year old, I never owned this. As a 40 year old, I feel like a 10 year old who now owns this. What a fantastic vehicle accessory. I like this a lot. And as a kid, I probably would have liked it even more. Although I'm not gonna lie. Like I said, I kind of feel like a kid again, holding this in my hands. Now up here, this is the button that you press to make Joker's mug fire at the front of the bike. What a fantastic sculpt that is. Would you ride a motorbike with your face on the front of it? I'm not sure, but this is the Joker we're talking about here. Let's press the button and cause him to fire his face. That's actually got quite a bit of distance considering it's so big and so heavy. Okay, let's put Joker on his motorcycle, which he seems to fit on just like, does it actually, does it fit? Hmm, which according to the box even, he can't really hold on to the handlebars. You just kind of got to sit him on there. That's sort of, that's, hmm, ah, and Joker doesn't have his tails, which clearly as you can see here, they're getting in the way, but you don't want to pull them off. So you know what, for as cool as this looks, I kind of feel like this may be a bit poorly thought out. Let's try stuffing his tails under his butt. Well, that's definitely better, but, uh, hmm. Well, well, I suppose that is one of the drawbacks you get from reusing molds and not making the figure and the accessory to go with each other. Joke's on you, Betsy. Now it's time for some target practice. <laughs> no, stop it. You can't do this. Why not? Because I'm Batman.
Well, apparently I can, and I just did. Anyhow, super friends, I think we've looked at pretty much everything, haven't we? The figure, the accessories, the Joker cycle, what it can do, and I love making these retro vintage action figures slash vehicles, and soon to come, playset videos in the future, and I can't wait to show you the next thing that I have in store for you that's old school. There's definitely more Kenner superpowers and Kenner Dark Knight collection coming, so stay tuned, and I will see you in the next one. Have a fantastic Super DC Day, everybody, and take care.